Hello guys, welcome back to my channel. So I'm graduating and like all graduates, you start to wonder what to do next. Well, I have a plan. I want to be financially free within the next 10 years. And by financially free, I mean I want enough money to buy back my time and enough money to build whatever startups I want. To put a number to that, I put 100 billion plus pounds. So if you've been following my channel, you would know that this channel is all about preparing for the AR era. There was a website Gold Rush back in the 90s, then there was the app Gold Rush in the 2010s. Now the next big thing in tech, I believe, would be AR, augmented reality, that will replace all our smartphones and everything and make it spatial. So how does this fit into my higher level goal? It's the Gold Rush part. Because people who will be best prepared when that era comes will be the people who are best positioned to provide those products that society would want to use and will be rewarded. That rush period before things get too saturated will be a short lived period. So the idea behind the whole plan that I'm about to present is how to best prepare for that stage and in the meantime survive but to do so with maximal leverage. That's all a bunch of words now let's break that down into practical realistic steps. So stage one is the income stage. First you need to get your cash flow right earn some income so you can support your living expenses. So I'm making sure that whatever skills I'm building should be highly relevant to that coming era. But at the same time, I want to be able to have enough time to pursue my own business ideas because these are the stuff that built real equity. Might be multiple businesses before that one thing that you do really blows up. If you followed my channel, you'll know that the bet I'm making is on Apple and its coming AR glasses. So with that view in mind, what skills can I get right now that will pay me in addition to making it highly relevant for that era? and that skill would be iOS development. To be able to build products in the iOS ecosystem would be a highly leverageable skill for that era. And if you combine that with like 3D spatial computing, like building AR apps for the Apple ecosystem, even better. So that's the skill that I want to get. To get that skill, I could either get a job as an iOS developer or sell my services as a freelance iOS developer. Now this was a hard decision because I actually could do both and do well, in my opinion, I thought, if I do a job, especially a coding job, it's going to be pretty intense, which means I'll probably spend like eight, 10 hours in the job itself. And the good thing is you get expertise from mentors and people more experienced than you. But in the day of the internet, you can get a lot of that online already. So that's not really a huge advantage. But the major disadvantage I see of having a job is that spending most of your day working at the job and by the time you come back home, you probably could do a bit more side projects, but it will not be as efficient. And more importantly, with a job, you won't be building equity over time. Your pay raise, the time you spend, it will all stay constant. But the other option, which is a bit more risky, but at the same time will give you more equity for this stage of life, I find is freelancing. And here's why. Freelancing, yes, it may take some time to get it right. But not only it breaks the upper ceiling, which means you could charge more for your output and efficiency, so you earn more over time. So that's one big advantage, the flexibility it gives. It gives me more time in my control to spend towards a long-term mission and really build equity and not just sell my time. And number two is that with freelancing, I won't simply be focusing on my technical skills, I'll also be practicing my selling skills, business skills. Freelancing is both technical and business. Job is just technical, mostly. So with that, for me, the obvious choice was to attempt the freelance first. And the risk that you're taking, especially in the beginning stages, it will be hard you to get your first clients, your first testimonials, it will take time to get that ball up and rolling. And during that stage, I see many things to do uh, that will minimize that risk. Uh, for example, one is to keep your living expense really low. And the other thing, if the freelance thing takes way too long to build up, you could even do some part-time jobs just to cover your living expense. So this is stage one, right? Freelancing, building equity, and the right skills for the coming era so that you not only pay off your living expenses, but you're also building some leverage, some equity. I also plan to document this entire journey in my channel. Different things I learned, how to set up a business, how to set up a portfolio website, raw experiences, which you can learn from hopefully, whether successful or failures, raw life as it happens. So this freelance stage, how much do I expect to earn towards my goal? The goal of this stage is simply to have cash flow to live. So I expect anywhere between 50 to 100k here in the UK with this freelance career. Obviously, it will take a bit of time, one to two to three years. There is upside to this, more upside than a job in terms of the income, but it's always capped because you're selling your time. And this brings us smoothly into the next stage, which is an audience-based business. For any business, the key challenge is to find an audience to sell to. You could do it through ads or you could do it through your influence. 
either are people who trust you and you could sell some valuable stuff to them. My audience, which is you guys, I'm gonna be completely blunt and I'm not gonna hide the fact that I'm not gonna sell anything in the future. That isn't my plans. It might seem manipulative or anything, but it is not because what you're doing is you are giving away a lot of free stuff to people so that they can see what you're capable of doing and they really trust you and your skills and the kind of value they provide. And then when the time comes, if I sell, let's say, a book or an online course or an app, for those of you who trust me and would find value in that product, you would buy it happily because you know what you're getting. So it's a win-win in that scenario. So I'm not doing anything apart from sharing with you what I learned both on the entrepreneurial and the technical side. Learn, share, learn, share. And by simply sharing, I'm building up an audience over time. With 100K subscribers, it would be reasonable to assume that would be enough to cover your living expense. And that means when that stage comes, I could completely get rid of my freelance or be less dependent on it and buy back more of my time. So at this stage, passive income coming in, I'll be closer to basically being free in terms of my time. And that'll give me a lot more time to pursue those big long-term projects. And also to note, this would be done in parallel with stage one. It's not like linear stage one, stage two. The upside is limitless. It's the digital product out there on the internet. There's no limit to how much it could sell. So I estimate it would be anywhere between 50, 100K to a million, two million, three million. 10 million plus, I think it's quite rare, especially for an online business. But one million, two million, yeah. It's very reasonable to assume that. The key challenge here of building that audience is what I'm doing now while I'm going through that skills acquisition stage. And again, audience building stage, you have to remember, it's optimized towards the AR era. I'm not doing a tech review channel or anything. This is a journey towards the AR era. So you can see that I'm hitting three birds in one shot there. So by this stage, on one side, I would have had a good freelancing career, the base thing that I wish I built upon. On the second base, I would have this audience-based business which is selling me products and earning me passive income. And both that had given me enough free time to build towards this ultimate AR era that's coming. And during these two stages, I not only acquired enough technical skills, building iOS apps, Apple AR apps, 3D skills, spatial computing, plus it's given me enough and really valuable selling skills, online marketing, digital marketing, selling to clients, being convincing, persuasive. So these two things, technical plus business and a large audience would be really force multipliers, effort multipliers that would allow me to enter that era with maximal leverage. You have to notice that these three things is formed step by step. It's not a one day thing. It takes a long time to build an artist. It takes a long time to learn those right skills. It takes a long time to build a good freelance career, but it's a natural progression, which if all things go linearly, which is another topic, will help me enter that era with maximal leverage. So that's stage three, if I didn't mention. The AR era arrives, Apple releases their glasses, people are moving away from their smartphones to the glasses, hungry for new software and content, and those who could provide that would be the winners there. So yeah, let's plot our moves, enter into this coming era, and I'll see you next video.